34 of Strange Brow Radio. I'm your host, Tobe Johnson. Today's guest is Rodney Ritter, a longshoreman who lived to talk about death. Yeah, he died, blunt force trauma kind of death. Not pleasant at all, but his story is, well, I guess it has a happy ending, especially since Rodney has a story to tell it all. And if you listen to episode 33, you can see there might be a theme going of life after death. Good things come in pairs. Heck, maybe good things come in threes. So life after death with Rodney. The first, Feral by Aaron. Lots of life there. Go to Etsy shop. Aaron is spelled E-R-Y-N. Shaman inspired drums, rattles, smudge fans. And an art show coming up this month. store and click the little heart button. It helps the algorithm. If you're not in the market to make a purchase, well, just be in the mood for clicking hearts. Feral by Aaron, E-R-Y-N, Etsy.com. Oh, first, a SETI update from Trout Lake, Washington. We'll be right back. All right, before we get started with our first guest, Rodney Ritter, wanted to take a moment to talk about our field trip. We took a field trip to the East Eddy Ranch in Trout Lake, Washington. Stayed there for about three days, and it was, well, how did I say this? It was a deluge, a monsoon, <laughs> an electrical atmosphere eruption. Man, oh man, <laughs> the gods were angry, and they let us know it kind of from the moment we got there. Um, it was a weather hurdle. So when we weren't hiding from, you know, the Noah's Ark situation at the East Eddy Field, uh, we were ducking around places, patching holes and tires. And there was just a lot of surprises that happened during this. And I want to talk to you about, I guess, one of the surprises that happened here. Now, if you go to the East Eddy Ranch, chances are you're going there to see the lights on Mount Adams. Now, just to give a little blow-by-blow blow what ESETI is, right? ESETI Ranch stands, it's an acronym, and it stands for the Enlightened Contact with Extraterrestrial Intelligence, ESETI, run by James Gilland. Bought the ranch over 15 years ago, longer than that, I believe, and it was actually a ranch ranch. It was a, a cattle ranch. And so if you go inside there and you get a ticket, um, it's not hard to do. You just go on eSETI.org or com and get yourself a ticket. You can see all sorts of stuff uh, from what they call the Field of Dreams, which is basically the cow pasture, right? And it's got kind of a new agey cult guru vibe going on. I mean... There are people totally on board with James Gilland's perspective. And one of the perspectives that they have is that they're being visited quite often through these stargates, these portals, not only on the ranch, but from the mountain. One of the things they believe is the mountain itself is like this giant carrier ship. The mountain has an interdimensional portal in it. They, they believe they see starships or ga galactic um, craft uh, erupt or power up in the heavens above at night and enter and exit the mountain. Now, there's crazy stuff that happened at the ranch. If it sounds like I'm putting those theories somehow in the wacko box, I'm totally not, because the ranch itself has some pretty inexplicable stuff. Uh, we did hear some interesting screams, howls, and whoops that sounded a lot like typical Sasquatch stuff far off in the distance. You're facing the western slope of the mountain when you're in the field and when you're at the ranch. That's the view you have, and it's a tremendous view. So go to Trout Lake, Washington to see Mount Adams, even if you don't go to East SETI. Uh, one of the things that the people, uh, mainly the people that live and work at East SETI Ranch, believe that the Palladian uh, star system or the Palladian race, people from Paladine, <laughs> the Palladians, all right? They believe the Palladians are interacting with them. And if it's not the Palladians, it's these race of feline humanoids. 
and they come and go as they please, enter and exit through these veils. Now, I totally believe that these veils, these stargates, portals exist. I didn't ever see them happen at the SETI, but they believe these type of beings interact with them, and thus Mount Adams seems to be involved in this whole mix-up. Now, strange stuff has happened at the ranch before. This is, like I said, the fourth or fifth time I've been there. There's been apportations we witness, um, strange uh, voices, I guess you'd call them, uh, saying your name, either nearby or in the distance that you can't account for, um, possible uh, UFO sightings, including black triangles that have been seen close up. There's black helicopters that have been seen. These are all either first-hand accounts or their uh, friends and family that have, have talked about this. So go to East City Ranch. But what I want to say is that I came to some conclusions and thank God for this storm that came through because I think in the end it actually paid off for me coming to a conclusion about Mount Adams. Now the first night we'd seen these inexplicable lights on mainly the western right-hand side of the mountain. That's also a major hiker's trail. And if you're, go, if you're going hiking on... Uh, Mount Adams, you go through Trout Lake, Washington, which is near the PCT or Pacific Crest Trail. It goes right through Tra Trout Lake, Washington, and we ran into these hikers all over. They were just walking around town looking for places to eat, go to the bathroom, and clean up. Well, this was the night before the storm, and so that night uh, we saw a lot of lights blinking on and off. Big, small, constant, short, mainly white lights and these are the these are the inexplicable lights right uh, a lot of them account for there being a supernatural answer to this okay now let's fast forward to the next night there was this huge thunderstorm a blanket of water just falling for you know two or maybe better part of two and a half three hours and it went through the mid-afternoon now that's the main time that these hikers are trying to get up uh, through the evening to one of the main trailheads on the western side to stay the night on or near the crest or the top of the peak of Mount Adams to watch the sun rise. This is my theory. Only my theory. The second night we saw no lights. I saw no lights. And I think the reason is this is that the hikers were thrown off by the thunderstorm. It's the last place that you'd want to go during a major electrical storm is to the top of a snowy peak with hardly any trees around. You'd just not want to do that. <laughs> and so we didn't see any lights at all that night. And I think that's probably why. So is everything un, you know, explained through a thunderstorm? No, I'm not saying that. And I could be totally wrong. This could be inexplicable, supernatural. The lights could all have some kind of mysterious origin. But I think it explains the majority of why we didn't see lights, unfortunately, at least in that portion of the mountains. I've seen the lights before. Many of you have seen these inexplicable living organic lights before. They have a calling card. And they don't care if there's a storm or not. So that's my conclusion. I guess if you want to call it a conclusion, I don't know. It's just my theory. And so you can, you know, if you think I'm full of crap, shoot me an email, strangebrowradio at gmail.com. Or go check it out yourself. The other thing I wanted to mention is I want to figure this out. So a calling card to any hikers. If you got a pack and you got a weekend in 2020... I'm going to go up that western slope and figure this out. At least try to figure this out. I know better men and myself have gone up there and tried to figure this out. But let's give it the old college try. And I know that there's a lot of inexplicable stuff in and around the mountain that would be pretty cool to spend the weekend with. So get in touch with me for that. If you want to go on Mount St. Mount St. Helens. If you want to go to Mount... At let's go to both. We'll go to Mount St. Helens. We'll go to uh, Mount Adams. We'll make a whole week of it. Now let's go to Mount Adams... Spend the weekend up there, strangebrowradio at gmail.com. If you're interested and you want to buddy up, um, let's start planning and we'll, we'll try to debunk or rebunk the Mount Adams mystery lights. Okay, 
I got that off my chest. Hope nobody's going crazy. Uh, shoot me hate mail again at strangebrownradio at gmail.com. Or you can shoot me, uh, oh, thank God you finally realized it's strangebrownradio at gmail.com. Whatever. I think we got to do an episode about Issei Rancher Jane, so stay tuned for that. Okay. Our guest. As I said, Rodney Ritter. Blue collar, longshoreman, tough guy, hang glider, uh, trail guide, uh, outdoorsy, man's man died. And he experienced quite a bit blackness and then beams. So let's hear about Rodney's near death experience and how it transformed him. Sit back, enjoy the show. And I give to you Rodney Ritter from B-City Ranch. Well, this happened back in July of 2017. I was working at the uh, boat dock areas uh, in South Seattle, off the Duwamish River, and uh, working as a longshoreman at the time. And we had just uh, started completing the last barge of the day, which was had large metal pilings, about 50 tons each, and we we're loading the first one of the day on a stack of uh, four levels high and I was working on the shore side and they asked me to come up and help lower one of the remaining that first piling down and uh, just got done completing that got my two feet onto the ladder and if you've ever experienced one of those like on the end of a table where someone happens to butt the table and you feel that shock come across well that's basically what happened to me and the ladder and myself decided to be removed from the stack and then I fell about 25 feet and when I fell my body struck the ladder as the ladder was striking the metal barge and after about a 45 degree after just trying to reach for the pilings in slow motion I went into the black um, from there I don't know how long of I was gone or what I was in that the darkness but then a they say, tear of light opened up and I happened to make my way towards it and as I was going through it I was then on a path with a, a wooded area, very tight narrow wood path and as I walked out, I walked out onto a ledge overlooking a large mountain meadow. But the area looked somewhat earthish but I felt like I was in a totally different place and I was looking down across this area and there was three tiers the lower tier was um, had beings down below sort of human form but they were the best way I can describe sparring with each other um, the second tier had a beautiful golden rectangular portal is the best way I can describe it and then on the third tier was a jeweled marbled white marbled halls and adjacent to that on the side was a large grass area going up on a hill and I sort of best way I can describe glided down into the meadow walked my way up onto the hillside and found a place to sit down and overlook everything and as I was doing this I still remember where I can was visually looking through the stems of grass looking down at the microcellular level um, and basically you're starting to just know all things at the time and then um, but the I want to describe something with the you know I want to keep talking about the light. The light, as I was looking through, it looked like sky, but it was so bright, so warm. But the it was like liquid love, love of a child times a million. I mean, I have two daughters, and I cannot love them to the extent that I know what this love feels like. It is unbelievable. It's like a drug. Um, and as I was laying there, again, time was irrelevant. But then all of a sudden I had them surround me. And by them I mean uh, light beings. They're very, some are, look skinnish, almost insect-like, but also human form at the same time. So they're very narrow-bodied, very limber, but uh, bright bluish-white light, uh, the brightest light surrounding me. And I don't know again how long I was with around them. Um, they just like appeared because again I felt like I, I knew this place before I'd been here before and like I snuck in but then when they surrounded me and I was all of a sudden boom I was sent down like a straw looking at them just as I was looking at anyone else 
never losing sight of them, but being stretched out like a slingshot, being sent down. And as I was going down this like shoot, my right eye closed up, the pain came into my body, and then very shortly I was in my body, coming to. Um, and found eventually I had my three quarters of my face was broken. My left pectoral major was cut and torn from my shoulder. I had shoulder damage, uh, brain bleed, uh, nose, blood was pouring from my nose, my eye, my ear. Um, then they, I was taken by car uh, to one of the local hospitals and uh, that was the closest I can say, but uh, I've met several others that have had similar experiences, especially with the light beings. But uh, it was definitely an experience that it's no longer, it's not a dream to me. It's the reality. It's, I saw what I saw. Okay. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, the time frame that happened for you while you were there was it any any time at all that would be familiar to our timeline or did it uh did it seem to happen so quick or so long did it were you there for a while were you there briefly from what i felt there was no sense of time it was i could have been there for a hundred years i could have been there for five minutes it was just the that love is what was so empowering it's just you again you're you're knowing all, you're seeing all, everything's all happening once. And like when I was looking at these beings and stuff, they could have been talking or anything else, but you know, they could have been doing everything communicatively through the brain. You know, all these things are happening, but mm -hmm. you know, again, you're just taking everything in. And then at the end, you know, I was not given a life review like some members were, or, mm -hmm. you know, remember some of the instructions, but I've had since then many impulses like this felt familiar right I was sort of told this or since this is what I need to do mm -hmm. you know I've followed on with that from making from special organites that I've was done to even now showing up here at this ranch and this mm -hmm. is now my second time doing with the ranch and meeting people that have had similar experiences as well as mm -hmm. you know other awakenings mm -hmm. uh, similar to this so or have s seen some of these beings even now, you said parts of that world there seemed familiar. Yeah, it's, well, you know, again, a lot of people talk about we're reincarnated or we go, once we go from this lifetime, we go to where our home is or maybe another part. Well, I might have been in another dimension before that same mm -hmm. place where I just went home to recover mm -hmm. and then, or by the time, and then I was sent back. And you kind of said that they looked... Uh, you look like you maybe showed up unexpectedly. Were they surprised to see you? Was there kind of an expression that dictated that? Well, it was just more of how they approached me. They're like they didn't even know I was there. You know, I've seen other beings around. No one knew I was laying in the field. You know, it's just like I felt like I got snuck in there. Like this was just a short time to come in here, and then you know to be sent back was sort of a heartache because I can still remember that pain coming into my body. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the feeling of losing that love that you just experienced and being torn away from it, you know, but you're sent back for some reason. And now as you, you know, I've had two years of recovery, slow recovery, body-wise, but many things have led to, you know, meeting other people from mm -hmm. who need healings to, you know, other people who have encountered similar NDEs. You know, we all seem to have a lot of common themes, you know, especially in our awakenings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, <clears throat> I can see that, yeah, maybe there is more, definitely more to life lessons for me ahead. Right, right. Uh, when you get into this, uh, you get out of the black and you see this hallway of trees. You even went so far as to, like, find images that uh, dictated what you saw before. And you're still kind of doing that, like you're going on Google Image, just looking yeah. for anything that looks familiar. Yeah, and best way, another way to describe this NDE was if anyone has seen the mu music video um, Disturbed Sound, is a Sound of Silence, mm -hmm. very said it wasn't dark like the video, but a lot of the similarities where you see two guys, go, or one guy, going into a grove of trees, mm -hmm. walking in, and then you see 
um, beings writing songs or on a street. Well, again, it's I'm seeing other just other people, mm-hmm. and then at the same time at the end, they also show these souls or other people surrounding the play uh, the musicians. So it's just like the same thing where the light beings were coming in. So I got extreme back chills when I was watching that video, and I had never seen the videos before mm. the accident. So this was everything was afterwards. So I'm seeing a lot of sight, like exactly what you said, were sights that right. are matching up to this. But I've never seen any of these sights prior to the accident. Right. But there's like this hunger in you to kind of put the puzzle pieces together and remember it with more detail detail. so you're seeking out things yeah what about these i mean let's just get to the the beings here because that's pretty interesting it's almost alien abduction-y the way you describe the insectoid type looking angels or they were they were were, uh, well the reason why i'm using the insectoid type because they were very thin very limber but they were human form too but they're Super bright, but very narrow. There wasn't a large body to it. Yeah, you know, it was very narrowed, but again, like spindly, yeah, gone. spindly, yes, yeah, and floating, walking, uh, just just surrounding around me. Just okay, most of the time I saw from basically from their chest up. Uh-huh. It's mostly where I was seeing because again I was laying down in the grass and I'm just like they surrounded me. I'm looking around them as they're all around me. You know, I didn't feel any. You know, concern of love, hatred, you know, anything. Well, why are you here? How do mm-hmm. you sneak away? There was nothing, none of that communication, what I remember. Mm-hmm. But they're just all around me. And all of a sudden, I can't tell you enough how long either. But then they just pushed me back like a slingshot. They pushed you back. Yeah, it wasn't like a, a, a moment that just happened. No, they were in charge of it. It sounded like they were like in charge of it. They, okay. And they pushed me back. And again, I've seen sort of pictures from YouTube or other people have had these beings like again like you said spindly is a good term for it just neural beings you know mm-hmm. in a group around there with bright lights or halos around them best way to describe did they have uh, features of insects not that I can say but more of that narrow face or I would say sometimes there was a sharpness to it to the face Okay. So that's what I would say. If you but different than a gray, like a yeah. traditional oh, no, gray, no, nothing, like, nothing that. like a gray. Okay. Basically, you know, some people have talked about these large insectoid type beings that are associated with the grays. Mm-hmm. That's was maybe what I would say is close between that and a human put together. Mm-hmm. Is the shape like a mantid, but emphasis mantid, on the yes. man. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a mantid. <laughs> yeah. And but then, but then with that light. Yeah. So I'm either looking at their soul or their their spiritual form versus their physical form. And they're full of love. Oh, the whole area is full of love. Yeah. It, it was just... And you're feeling this oneness, like totally connected to the universe or whatever everything. universe you're in. Yes. I mean, you know, and again, going back to where I can still, I feel a sadness because I cannot share that love mm-hmm. of what I experienced there, like with the love to my daughters or anyone right. else or family members. I cannot generate that type of love. There's, you're, 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 it's like a drug because you're so addicted to that, that, that feeling. And I got to believe even through that experience where I was dazed, you know, when I came back in my body mm-hmm. and there was many things that my body went through from there to the hospital, mm-hmm. but the doctors were just amazed how calm I was. They're like, how can you be this calm when there's people who are down the hall screaming their heads off or they, one woman had taken a baseball bat and the nurses are trying to calm her down saying, hey, there's a guy next to you that's three times worse. And I was taking less drugs. They're like, how are you dealing with the pain? I was still addicted to the love at that point. You know, some people can say it was maybe shock, but I'm still saying I could still, I was still feeling that love at that point. Okay, so you're you're inside this deep supernatural event. Here you are, kind of a longshoreman, uh, blue collar job. You know, part of a union, the whole bit. I would imagine, right? Like non-union. Okay, <laughs> non-union. All non-union. right. Okay, but they're taking care of you, sort of. Um, were you uh, in the realm of seeking out anything supernatural before this? No. T- 
totally not interested, not thinking about I it? Was, I've been awoken a little bit. You know, I worked with dousing rods and crystals, but not to this level. Like a passing interest? More of a passing interest where yeah. I was just being sort of led, being led on a path, but not searching it out. I was just trying to pay the bills. You certainly weren't going on retreats to New Age guru centers like no. ESETI. No. No. And what did you think, and just, you know, be honest, what did you think about people that did that? Did you have any opinion? Did the... Oh, oh, about oh, people that oh, would come to a place like this or no, seek I, out, I, I you would, know? I was before, I was, you know, I was interested, but the same mm-hmm. going, you know, maybe is it real, is it not? You know, right. you're, you're still hesitant. There's some things you felt a little more comfortable with crystals that I said, okay, there's things right. are happening there, but not to the level where I took a, you know, a hundred steps and now I'm where I'm at today. Right, right. You know, there's no way I was still at that point. I I had, previous to that, I was working, you know, as a senior manager for Cabela's and, you know, stress was life and I, I was done with that point. Mm-hmm. I had, and I, you know, went back to maritime just to slow life down. But at the same time, you know, still put a decent yeah. uh, paycheck, paycheck out. out yeah. And, Maybe give some time to do a few other things when I'm back home, when I'm not out at right. sea or whatever. But then to have this experience where my whole life has now shifted, where I'm you know, meeting again more people that have had similar NDEs. I'm searching, who've also been searching for information. You know, we find each other on Facebook. I find people, you know, at example at the ranch. Uh, also watching a lot of YouTube. Uh, researching a lot of NDEs and their experiences, and it's an NDE. I know that's what people call it, but you would we're dead. Well, I mean, you, I mean, you. Well, have, I use the term NDE, yeah. but for most people who have experienced it, we say it's a death experience. We, yeah. we, because we'll generally tell you right off, I was dead, I died. Yeah. We don't say, oh, I went, I had a dream. Right. This. Is it? No, right. I literally was. You didn't dead. slip under anesthesia to the degree where it was just a momentary lapse. Uh, I mean, you had a clear present. You know, you had died you, due to I an left, injury. I left yes. this earth or wherever yes. I went. Yeah. You didn't Dimension. flatline. You died due to blunt force trauma. Yes. Yeah. And I didn't get a choice, you know, where I, my idea, I wasn't floating above my body. I wasn't seeing the, witnessing the scene. I left. I, my consciousness was gone, you know, and, <clears throat> but even, you, go ahead, even with this brain bleed, you know, and tra- trauma that I just started from my face, you know, this memory is still vivid. Mm-hmm. It's not where it has changed, you know, or maybe I saw this, maybe I saw this. It's just as clear as day. I, mm-hmm. I never, again, a lot of people in a dream where they, you know, like, switches off. I came into my body watching this happen. You know, I didn't, it just mm-hmm. melded into it, you know, from my right eye closing up slowly to, you know, feeling that pain come in when you're getting close into your mm-hmm. body. But it was just, it was like a merge. It was, you know, I was... Then it was the only time when I did that that I lose sight of them. Yeah, you have very specific recall over it. And let's just tell folks, this is less than how many years ago? This less is, than two years. Oh, yeah. sorry, just two years, yep. Yeah, so it's still pretty fresh as far as actually happening. And so your recall would be there. Do you think about, like, do you worry that maybe this memory will fade? Not as much worried about it fading. I mean, I still, its it seems like it's imprinted in me. Or, best way a lot of people I've talked with, as well as I personally feel, that part of us stays on the other side. There's one, if you, one card out of the deck is on the other side. Still. Mm-hmm. I've had people who literally, I don't know, come up to me and actually put their hand on my shoulder and say, you're connected. Oh, just randomly? Randomly. Oh, up really? Say, You're connected to source. I don't know who this person is. I don't know their spirituality. Is it at a, they, is it at a place just, like this or is it no, the Safeway uh, Deli? I, I came, well, the last one I was buying actually would be composting worms for my garden. And the guy walked out and said, You're connected to source. Wow. It's like he could either see with the halo or the whatever's around my aura, who knows what, but he just came straight out and told me this. You know, and then we shook hands and we started talking just. Like we would be talking here at Yeseti, where yeah. Common Joes are talking a different language, but it's, we know that language. Right. But I'm going, I don't know this person, and they, and this is not just one, this is of multiple people. Mm-hmm. And then from this accident of making these like special organites that I got compelled to do, I've worked with healing basically a lot of other people. Some people have said I have a higher energy where 
they describe as a energy blaster where I'm either going to make you extremely happy around me or I'm going to bring the tar out of you. You know, um, of course, phones, my phone battery doesn't last more than a couple hours at a time. No you kidding. Know. So you drain electronics. Drain electronics. I can't wear a watch. Has it always been that way? No. I used to wear a watch that's all the time. A, that's new I in the last. I knew the time when the ex- I knew I was gone for about a half hour because I looked at my watch before I got off this off the, the stack. I knew it was one o'clock. And then by the time, you know, when I was getting droggy and I was in the mm-hmm. car and they're taking me to the hospital, I was looking at my watch saying, okay, it was about a half hour. But we don't know if that's how long you had died. But I, what I do know is when my friend, yeah. they found me, I was not breathing. Right. I was gone. Yeah. And as they're transporting me to the office when I was basically dead, I came for a second back asking, oh, what happened like this? And I was gone again. Oh, wow. So I was still, so that's one thing. So I, so yes, I had a physical thing in the body. Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> Parts to come back, but I was the, my consciousness was somewhere mm. else yeah and let's mention too that you were triaged poorly yes. by your company they just kind of picked you up and threw you in a car yeah. without any kind of protection of your spinal no neck column restraint, no back restraint nothing nothing and yeah. then also no ambulance no yeah. no 911 phone call so they literally were taking me as blood was pouring out of my nose out of my eye which was closed up and then my ear mm-hmm. you know they did not know that I had a brain bleed and that my face was basically three quarters of it was broken. Yeah. And I've seen these pictures. It, it looks like something got the best of you in the worst way. I mean, you met both sides of the horns of the bull. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you here you are potentially in a tremendous amount of pain if you wake up, but you're avoiding a lot of this pain. Was there any sense of what your body had become on the other side when you're over there? No, I had did you no. know that you had died at all? No, I wasn't really. I was just more of a fascination of what I was seeing. Right. But at the same time, there was a calmness. Like, again, I've been here before. Mm-hmm. So that's where it sort of, I get the point where I snuck in. Like, I just was able to come back home right. for a little bit or hide away mm-hmm. through wherever this trauma could be. But I was, again, just relaxed. You know, I've come across some other end of years who have said they've gone to a place where the soul was sent for healing. Mm-hmm. for a little time that could have been the field where I was resting and just t- soaking up the mm-hmm. love energy whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it before I got sent back do you recall any sounds I don't remember the sounds I just remember the light smell um not much no, no smells okay it was just mostly just the visuals mm-hmm. going through and seeing people you know, I could say maybe as when I was watching the people sparring, I was hearing them okay, doing let's things. Let's talk about that. What do you mean sparring? That's really curious. The best way to, and I've described this scenery to some people, and they've they've told me I, w- I went to Freya's Halls. I um, don't know the Norse term of how you pronounce that, but it's where there's a Valhalla. For where Freya, the goddess, the Norse goddess, she gets first choice. Odin gets second choice. So... Freya's Halls is where half the mm-hmm. warriors perish she takes and the Valkyries work with that so when I was seeing these people sparring it looked like they were physically sparring they had shields they had swords they were practicing stuff but it was you could see them doing this but I'm like okay that's interesting cool and then you look down to the next piece which was the the, the portal Mm-hmm. You know, and I've seen this portal somewhere else before. I've, I've seen this thing. I, I still haven't found it yet in physical form here, like a book or things, like a picture, but I know I've seen that before. But everything I described with the Norse, and I had, previous to this, had just got into some Norse reading, just about the cultures and different pieces of it. I had a medium who told me that I've had many near-death experiences before, which I've, being an Alaskan guide, I've had multiple Bromber charges. I've survived a hang glider at 12,000 feet inside a thunderstorm. So I've had a lot of close calls in my lifetime. And so she uh, suggested that I wear a Thor's hammer necklace, mm-hmm. which I was wearing that day of the accident, but not to the point where I knew or researched any of these things. about. I never didn't know about Freya's Halls. I didn't know anything mm-hmm. about this other stuff, and it just... 
Were you into Norse mythology before this? Was that like a no, fascination? It was just, no, it was just where I had done a reading and yeah. she said, you need to wear this. So you weren't watching reruns of the Vikings nope. before you died nope. and just like obsessed? I like, was not even into the Vikings. I haven't, right. I've seen some of the Viking shows afterwards. Right. But now it's where I've been reading some of the stuff, you know, regarding her halls where people have made mention to it. Mm-hmm. So I pulled it up and, you know, read about it. Mm-hmm. And with the Valkyries, I also have been told by one of my, um, this medium that I had a woman spirit guide. She was very sure of herself, and because I've gone through many other challenges in life, she was she was pretty pompous of what she's gotten me through. You know, so to me, I still relate to her. As, could she be one of those? She, um, uh, what do you call? Uh, I just said it. Unfortunately, I can't spirit remember. Spirit guide. Uh, not spirit guide, but she was a Valkyrie. Okay. You know, she could be a, one of my personal Valkyries. That's was is one of my guides, mm-hmm. right there. You know, I'm just throwing you're starting to slowly see connections but Mm -hmm. in how different people have different ways of explaining it yeah but it's again just one part of this big puzzle okay so now you're here at this giant puzzle East Eddy Ranch and you've been here before and you come here for healing you said have you found pieces of the puzzle here I would say more of little other validations. I've got to witness the orbs using uh, James's uh, very expensive uh, binoculars, IR, you know, binoculars. Right. And James actually, Gilliland's yep. the proprietor of the yep. Isetti Ranch. Go yep. ahead. So I was able to see, you no, know, so you're watching these orbs going around, you get to see some of the ships going through, which I've seen that are in the daytime, but to see these other things sort of gives additional validation going, hey, this I've seen these other things. This could be another part of it. Mm-hmm. And then when I have seen some of these beings being described by some people who are experienced, again, the NDEs, but also on the extraterrestrial side, there's they talk about other dimensions. And this could be another part of it. We, you know, who really knows what heaven is to people? We, could be, we are all could be from different areas. And some of us, like me, I went home for a little while, wherever this place was at. So, you know, and those those spirit beings, who knows, we could be one of those. It was just our turn to go to Earth and have this experience. Being a non-physical being going into a physical experience. You know, and then one day returning to where we ever go next. <laughs> yeah. So much of what you described just sounds so geared towards what you needed to see. And I'm not saying that it is anything less than reality mm-hmm. but it makes me curious like were you sent to a place that was so comfortable to you at your internal core is that kind of where you're at basically yeah, yeah. Or, or, um, you know because it let me just take it all in or just be in a relaxed place for a while from the trauma that I just mm-hmm. went through because slow motion seeing you know trying to grab that pipe where other people describe that same similar thing where things were just slowing down. Like I could, it felt like five minutes for me trying to reach to grab the piling as I was starting to move down towards earth. You know, that's, so that slow down. And so you're matching up to a lot of other people have described mm-hmm. and then they go to the black, mm-hmm. you know, and a lot of people, some people believe they go to hell or it's a purgatory type place for a little while. Because again, I can't tell you how long I was there, mm-hmm. and again, on that side of things, it could be I could have been there for lifetimes. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just how you feel totally at ease. I, th- there was no worry about what happened to me before in my body or anything else. You know, mm-hmm. I had no feeling of that, it was all in the moment, just absorbed in, into all. Let's talk about this whine it, whine it. Sorry, I'm listening to someone off in the distance here. This white granite hall that you're describing. Marble. So, basically, if you can figure, like, let's say, the one thing I found closest to is, like, the Lord of the Rings. The They go into Moria. Um, matched with Greek architecture or something like that, or, or, or the Minoan type stuff. That type of style... Mm-hmm. Halls, just a long, but it was long. But, but to me, it was white, and I remember jewels, 
jewel halls where it's just you know different jewels in the upper area and it was just but it was like glowing gleaming I mean it was just you're in awe of this place but uh, so you know seeing the different tiers like you can see the people here or maybe our people are coming and going through the portal whatever it could be you know and then to have these halls here where, wherever they people gather too because there was there was beings everywhere around but there was a lot down below but you know it was just them like was laying in the grass and had all and then these other beings show mm-hmm. up and they all look the same yeah when the light beings were all mm-hmm. were the same the the people or other part they're almost like souls where you know what they were mm-hmm. you know I can't say that, you know, like I'm looking at you right now as a physical human form I can't say that's exactly what they were another but they were there were beings doing sparring you know with the swords with the shields mm-hmm. doing our stuff but they they were having fun doing it. this wasn't a necessity or being hardcore trained they were just they're doing their part there and you know how some people they talk about Valhalla were right you know they you know, we drink beer we, we wait right we have yeah. fun we do things and it sounds like a civilization just like you would wander into like a remote village I mean here you are just this off track individual wandering into this remote village yep. and you see these remote villagers interacting the way you would kind of expect them if someone just wandered in mm-hmm. and they're like oh here's the trail <laughs> you want you wandered off trails fine yeah. sir yeah and that's but it's you know it's just the weirdest part was when they you know again when they all showed up around me you know, I was like, "Uh oh!" They found me. They found. They, they finally found me. Mm-hmm. Or, but you know, like I shouldn't be here. I just knew there was a part of me that said I knew I shouldn't be here because I was just someone place else. Mm-hmm. But here I am. But again, like I know this place. I've seen this place. Well, but again, it was a huge mountain meadow way up high. And again, I can't tell you how high I was mm-hmm. up on this other ledge when I came out. Yeah. But it was just it was just laid out before me. Okay, let's talk about after the fact. It's been a couple of years. Some people speak about the lingering effects of um, these doors kind of still being open and you still have a slight interaction with this world. Does it still interact with you? Do you have I still have a, like, interaction? I still connect. Like I said, there's a piece of you that stays there, mm-hmm. especially after this indie where part of my soul feels there. And that's why it's when I've had like a confirmation when someone comes up to me and says, you're connected to source. Some people and some events, they come out and they feel a high or they, you know, they, they get these weird feelings like these new vibes arising. And here I am around these people and I'm not feeling the vibe, but I know what they're saying. It's like I already have the connection. I don't have that raise in vibration because I'm already connected to source. So my energies are even higher. And then my job is to, let's say, to help, again, my job is here to help heal you by, you know, exposing more light to you so that your vibration rises up to mine Mm -hmm. or your black tar karma, whatever crap, is going to come out. Oh, yeah, I like that. And, you know, expose it. Because I've gone into rooms and I've had some people literally just bust a fit. They don't know why. They've come back later and said apologize. They just felt this oh. darkness come towards them. I'll give you an example though too. Um, the, when I was talking about these organites that I made, I had a coworker that I used to work with whose husband was over in Afghanistan uh, as a truck driver, and he was having issues with him and her. They were battling and fighting with each other, and she felt like she was losing him. So he has very strong PTSD. So I made a dragon organite piece for him I sort of saw like premonitions of what he needs I sort of become like a pharmacist with crystals of what he needed and I put this together in this form this being and so she took it happily she didn't know what she's like what really is this thing I said just see what it does and these people are not woke they're not they don't have no idea but she decided to put it underneath his bed on the side where he sleeps without telling him without telling him so he come home from a long trip and he's grumbling and stuff he goes to the bedroom he looks down and sees this <clears throat> little dragon head sneaking underneath the bed so he reaches down picks it up 
and she has now come to the room where he's at. He's holding this thing. He looks at her, and this guy is the hardcore, you know, tough guy, whatever else, you know, very shielded type. He turns her and says, I just felt the darkness lead me. And ever since then, she's like, you treated a miracle. Whatever you did, you know, for him, my life has done better and better. And she still checks in with me and, you know, sees what I'm doing. Because I'll post sometimes every now and then another piece that I made on Facebook. And, you know, she's excited to see that. But what it did for her husband, you know, she still is grasping and opening up more now mm -hmm. to other things. And you know, that's one exposing other people. But I've worked with a lot of people with healings. Um, you know, some people have had uh, severe anxiety attack to other things. I make these pieces in from, you know, multiple stories. I'm getting back feedback that mm -hmm. these people are having experiences with these pieces that I'm making. Mm -hmm. It's causing some healing effect to the, what do you say, the uh, keeper. Describe what's uh, what's an organite so an exactly organite, like you make them yeah. tell them how you so make some, them. Most people are very familiar with pyramid organites, which they have different crystals mm -hmm. and then different metals. Some people put shredded aluminum, copper, brass, as far as the metals, and you try and keep a fifty to fifty percent ratio. Now, prior to this accident, I you know was aware of them, but it wasn't to the point where I had to make them. I had to do this. Within about two weeks of returning after surgery, you know, again, I'm laying in on the recliner. I can't do much. My jaw's wired shut. Um, drinking broth a couple times a day. So, but I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, yeah, so I'm trying to find things to do. So I just started watching YouTube, but I was getting compelled. I remember seeing this stuff and I kept seeing crystals and I kept seeing visions in my head and find out about organite. So I started looking at different videos and I became eclectic into different pieces of how different people are making these things. And I was picking and choosing what sounded right for me or what I needed to do. And I decided the very first, what I'm going to do, let's not go easy. Let's just start off and make a skull. So I happened, this was right before Halloween. So I, uh, Happened to go to the uh, dollar store with the wife, and when I was there, I saw these um, plastic skulls, and I decided to cut it out, parts, and I'll pour the resin into this, use it as a mold. So I didn't realize that it was going to have a little bit of an effect with the resin, but it made a, it still formed a nice skull, and I used several different things from black magnetite from where my old gold mining days I used to, that I keep. So you're inserting kept. as a resin inserting. before it dries. Yep. Whatever you Different layer. You're doing yeah. different layers. Mo potions. Putting, yeah, <laughs> potions in. Yeah. But the other thing is I also started developing a like ritual to this. You know, just I was using, um, got into singing bowls. I was using, um, you know, laying other crystals around and, you know, incense. And just, I felt like almost like a channeling coming through me. Because there's where, if you ever, people work with energy... If you put your hand over something, you might feel like two uh, magnets repulsing each other. When I'm done with this, my sessions with these things, I cannot put my hand on the being. I can feel there's something there. There's another soul there. And from working with other mediums who have, I've given some of these to, and other people, they have, have said, they've commented that there's a being or something that comes through me or channeling because I'm connected with Source through this part that when I make these things, there's like another soul in this mm -hmm. piece. So you're waiting till they've taken a, a life of their own. They're yeah, loaded. They're loaded. And then you do a load-sensitive test and like, okay, yep. next skull. Yep. Love okay. and gratitude, love and gratitude, love and gratitude. You know, I'll mm -hmm. do different sayings and things with them, whatever mm -hmm. I feel is right. And then once they're done, mm -hmm. then, you know, I ship them off. There's some that I've... I can't sleep at night or they're so the room fills with energy and my wife is and my kids are freaking out because they know something's going on and it's like I gotta get rid of this thing this one wants to go now mm -hmm. you know and then you ship them off to people I've shipped them from all around the country I shipped them up to Canada several mm -hmm. to Alaska where can they, people find these um it was just mostly I find them 
I'm uh, so it's through okay. Facebook or thing where they talk about well I you know I actually had this type of illness or mm-hmm. part. I key in on that and sometimes make determination I give one for free. You know, so mm-hmm. I just make a few every now and then that I let's say for cash to get some more crystals back so I can make out more mm-hmm. versus taking out of my pocketbook because for a while my pocketbook was almost empty because <laughs> I was giving so much I had this yeah. feeling to give I, I was so feeling, yeah. with gratitude yeah. that I had to give so much away it gets addictive to mm-hmm. see people go what yeah get excited yeah. and they see the, and, the, and yeah. then they have these reactions yeah. to these pieces so and I've had the best way to describe again the same lady who described me as a energy blaster she says, these are pieces where if you can't be around people physically, this is something that carries your energy. So when they're around them, mm-hmm. it share, it spreads that light. Some people said, that, and I still believe that they also network with each other. Mm-hmm. They communicate because some people and some of my, uh, these keepers, I call them, they, share, they say they hum, like they're talking to the other ones. So if someone needs something, they may not have this crystal in their form here mm-hmm. but this other skull or dragon or yeah. whatever else has that it makes you wonder like is the skull like itself sacred mm-hmm. geometry right because yep. the crystal skulls seem to have these principles too yep and that's why even when I, the second time now here coming to Yuseti I had a premonition where I was I had to gift Odie which is my original skull that my very first organite and put him out here in the field of dreams Oh, and you so, did that? And so I did oh, that. Okay. I put that with an, another pyramid out here. Okay. So this way, too, and how I think about it, is where they wanted to share this energy from here to the other ones. So this way, they're always at the main vortex. Now, has anything supernatural, paranormal happened when these things are in a room? Do they literally sometimes take a life on their own? Has there been... L- give you a, Give you a couple examples. So I had one woman... Um, she suffered from severe anxiety attacks. Mm-hmm. She had uh, a dog where she had to this would let them know that she was about to have an attack. And for the last year and a half, I had made her a uh, raven. She has not had one attack. So this has saved countless dollars mm-hmm. for medically wise as, as mm-hmm. well as they don't know what to do with the dog now because she doesn't need the dog. Mm-hmm. One other example, simple one was I made several pyramids. Um, and I had given to a woman who works with several ladies um, up in Alaska. Mm-hmm. And she runs a shop called Witch, uh, Witchwood. And uh, so up there in the wintertime, they really don't get to do much. So, you know, it's mostly dark. So they watched a lot of movies. So she was doing some energy healing where she was taking this pyramid behind these ladies with a Tesla plate that seems to amplify these pieces with that Tesla plate. And as she's going behind... All the different ladies, they're, you know, working on the grids and the body. But she comes behind this one woman, and as she comes behind her and started doing it, the pyramid exploded. The front part of the pyramid just exploded. Oh, wow. And so they turn on the lights, and lo and behold, her fingers and her body, she was going blue. The healer or the woman? The woman. Oh, she was going blue. Going blue. That's not good. So basically (laughs) this pyramid sacrificed itself to let her know there was a problem with this lady. Lo and behold, it comes out that her boyfriend was poisoning her because she was into these alternative healings methods versus the the Christian uh, way. So he was actually poisoning her. So, like, with a lot of people with hematite rings, they wear hematite rings, and a lot of times they crack, like, saying it, they give them for themselves. This pyramid gave itself. Wow. Because of and this. this and not save the this first woman. time I've heard about stones cracking around people getting right. energy work done. And this whole thing just exploded. Mm-hmm. So, and that was just, I've had multiple examples of people who had, again, just, you know, like, the other one I described with um, the husband, you know, mm-hmm. feeling that darkness leave him. So many yeah. people have reported many events now I had none of these events happen before mm-hmm. this accident no I wasn't dealing with people who were out there and going healing or da, 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 I can do this stuff here but you know and it still feels surreal with me and I always feel good when I know it's going to a keeper but and I again I see these premonitions coming in mm-hmm. of different crystals and I can you tell me what you what's ailing you and I will sort of tell you what 
or I can put together. So you custom custom make order. these pieces. But yeah. sometimes you know, like, so oh, this one I've had on the shelf for a year, yep. and it's supposed to go to her. Yep. Yeah. I will literally I'll carry crystals myself, but also I'll, I'll like first time I came out here to Eusebi, I met a woman. She was going through cancer, and I was told I had to. This woman had to have a dragon, or, or this, I just knew I had to bring this dragon out. And this is a was my personal dragon for a while. I her name was Precious. And they sometimes they tell their keepers what they are, or and sometimes they'll give a name. Sometimes they'll mm -hmm. different uh, female at attribute or male at energy. And so I had her for a while, and I came out here, and after we met, I and I'm like, you need to have this, you know. Of course, she's taken back with tears and just you know swelled up with things, mm -hmm. but she had showed a couple other pictures of stuff and. We were all laughing at this because here was her with dragons. There was like four things here, and then even her chips that was she was eating as I was giving this to her was a dragon on the package. Mm -hmm. So all these little synchronicities were just going, oh my god! And then ever mm -hmm. since then we've communicated back and forth. You know that she started up mm -hmm. a, um, a little Etsy shop with right, selling right. natural remedies, mm -hmm. and now this dragon has come into it with even part of the name of her mm. business we gotta get you on Etsy so yeah but, so we'll see you after my lawsuit first <laughs> so, I hear you there but well uh, it's so encouraging to see where you were and where you are now because you're so happy on your own skin and so many people aren't and here you are living your dream through what was a nightmare and now you've walked out of it and I mean how many people actually up. live you know their best self especially you're still a young guy it's not like you learn this in your 60s mm -hmm. or 70s a lot of people have to we see them come here you know what i right. mean like we've seen them come here like i'm 65 i'll finally kind of check out this other side of yep. me and it's like oh and that's you know when i look back at my life so far i've seen where i've been led from one place to another and mm. i've been recently listening to abraham hicks on uh, YouTube, it's a, it's a woman. She sort of again, sort of channels things, and how she's she's a public speaker and how to using the law of attraction. Mm. And it's where a lot of these things have all seemed to relate. When how she says letting things go and opening up to things and visualizing, and putting your intentions out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of these things that I, when I started looking back in my life. Again, it's true. One thing has led to another to another, and that the universe is always trying to take care of us to the best of its ability. Mm -hmm. You put intention out, and I've lived my dreams. I, mean, mm -hmm. I I've ate with astronauts. I've, you know, I guided my um, flight legend, you know, General Chuck Yeager personally. I, you know, I've got to meet people that I've always wanted to meet, and I actually got to meet them or guide mm -hmm. them, like in Alaska, for example. You know, and then from going from that job, you know, people think consider a dream job to the next dream job of working, starting out at nine bucks an hour as a clerk for Cabela's and less than 10 months later, now a manager out in the store here in Lacey, Washington mm -hmm. to a senior manager, two stores of the year, you know, mm -hmm. um, corporate spy. He's got, he's got the ring. Yeah. He's showing me the giant Cabela's Those gold ring. ring. Yep. It looks like something Green Lantern yeah. would point at you. Yeah. And it's where, <laughs> and then I was working for the number three man in the company. Yeah. And, you know, within five years of going from that. So there's all these things that are being led. And even people now, they say, well, how do you go from here? I said, well, and I look at this even more. What happened to me, yes, could be considered, you know, negative. But I look at it as a positive thing. It's brought so much on. I used to, um, you know, was a, you know, drink a little bit. I used to do all these other different things. That's no longer me. Right. You know, so it's very cool. We're living a different life and and just be a little more appreciative and going, hey, you know, it was meant to be. And if I look back of all these other mm -hmm. times, that's something. Yes, life was a downer, but then it was there was an up cycle. Mm -hmm. Well, I know now how far bottom is. I was dead. Yeah, you hit the bottom. So yeah, yeah so you and hit bottom. I hit bottom, and instead of you know, and you know, I'm not seeing my type where I go to the hospital and when I'm getting my physicals and getting checked out all the time. You can see the people that decide to live in this physical life of being drugged down or they're a victim. Mm -hmm. Well, I look at it as going well, something may, I might have saved me. I right. could have been on a different boat or ship and it could have capsized. Something else could have happened. Right. 
this is giving me a different choice and now it may actually be a plow where I wanted to have a life you know freedom life well it depends on what happens to my future with legally wise or anything else here could blow right through everything and now I won't have I can have my do my other dreams that I want to do of mm-hmm. running a part like nursery slash retreat center right you know that could all happen well um, it's an incredible story we're here with Rodney things are winding down here or starting up I guess at uh, East SETI we're actually we suffered a pretty major blow weather wise and uh, what was going to be a morning interview uh, has been postponed here to the evening but Rodney I want to thank you for sharing your story with us and I feel like this probably won't be the last time that you and I see one another nope we'll be doing a lot more in the future okay cool thanks Rodney yep all right that was Rodney Ritter Turns out we actually are neighbors, and we will be doing more together. I invited him out, and I'm going to re-invite you out to the Manresa Castle in Port Townsend, Washington, for Strange Brow's first pod castle live. This is your chance to go to a legit haunted castle turned hotel and book a room for the 25th, which is the show from 7 to 11, absolutely free so just show up on the 25th and the 26th for the Manresa Halloween party I guess you'd call it dress up of course that would be Saturday October 26th my birthday as well so show up for some fun October 25th and 26th if you want to book a room go to manresacastle.com there's a booking for the 25th but if you want to get a ticket for the actual Halloween party I think it's a $10 door fee or you can book a room two nights in a row we certainly are especially on the second floor which is the most haunted floor and to book a floor for the Halloween party you got to go to the castlenpt.com that's the castle I-N-P-T.com is an in Port Townsend the castle NPT.com and get your ticket or get a room ticket combo. I think rooms are range between 125 and like 240 if you got to have the master suite. Anyway, check that out. Ron Moorhead will be there. The Praca Skulls from Peru, he's going to bring. We're going to talk about alien DNA as far as I'm concerned on these Praca Skulls. Ron's from Port Townsend. He's going to talk about his ghost stories. Psychic medium Sarah Nash is also going to be there. She is an ex-consultant, psychic medium consultant with the LAPD, and also used to work at the Manresa Castle. And she's got a time traveler story that I think you're going to want to hear. And then Barb Shoop with her amazing cloaking video. So if you don't know about the cloaking video check out barb shoots cloaking video we're going to talk about portals and then during the intermission this just in we're going to have a theremin player so just imagine if you will a 1959 sci-fi movie and then in between the ufo coming down and the aliens walking out down the ladder towards the farmer with the pitchfork that music in the background that's called a theremin and there is a there's a person, Darren Locke. Uh, he's going to play the theremin for us with some hopeful, some uh, current relevant UFO footage in the background. So that's coming up. You want to check that out. We will see you on October 25th for the free first podcast live. Should be a lot of fun. All right, that's it for the show. Remember, if you want to be a guest or you just want to talk, go to strangebrowradio at gmail.com. New episodes uh, of the archive are going on YouTube every week. I think we're up to episode 17 or 18 right now. And then the new website's in development. And there's just a lot of new stuff going on. 